Hello, and welcome to our AI Lab Hot Item. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Michiel van Lerberghe. Michiel is an IP lawyer focusing on artificial intelligence. After working for law firms for multiple years, he recently became the in-house legal counsel for ML6, a leading European service provider building and implementing AI systems for several multinationals. The reason? A blog post by Michiel on LinkedIn in which he explains why the envisaged transparency in the AI Act regarding copyrighted material is very hard, not to say impossible, to comply with. Let's hear what Michiel has to say. Thank you for having me here on uh, behalf of ML6. And it's a pleasure to see that our blog post gained interest uh, from this community. Although this particular blog post only concerns a minor part of the many recitals and articles of the AI Act, we definitely appreciate having a platform to uh, articulate our opinion on this topic. Now, the upcoming AI Act, which is currently going to the final discussions, it does not only aim to regulate the risks of AI systems, but also aims to put certain obligations on the providers of foundation models. Now, simply put, a foundation model is a large-scale AI model trained using large amounts of data that serves as a basis, so the foundation, for further specialization or application in uh, multiple domains. A well-known example of such uh, foundation models are generative AI models, uh, which have the capability to autonomously uh, generate content, be it text, images, uh, audio, or video. Think of the famous systems that we all know, such as GPT or uh, Midjourney. Now, pursuant to one of the obligations imposed by the current version of the AI Act, providers of these foundation models would have to document and make publicly available a sufficiently detailed summary of the use of training data protected under copyright law. Now, basically, this would mean that a company such as uh, OpenAI, as a provider of ChatGPT, would be obliged to document and disclose the copyright protected data that it used to train their models. Well, the obligation of this, uh, the goal of this obligation is quite clear and also logical, namely, it's providing transparency and ensuring that stakeholders have visibility into the workings uh, of these influential AI systems. However, and while transparency is definitely a good thing that should be supported, uh, yeah, we raised two arguments in a blog post uh, why the upcoming obligation could prove to be very difficult uh, and not to say impossible to comply with. The first argument that we raised is that copyright can actually go very far and that a lot of different content uh, can potentially be protected by copyright. It's books, it's images, it's pieces of text, it's text snippets, it's, uh, it can be a design object, it can be the, the, the design of a functional object and so forth. And we cited multiple examples from case law to show this. For example, there's a case law from the European Court of Justice as well, where it ruled that even 11 consecutive words can already be protected by copyright. But these foundation models, they are trained on a countless amount of data. So from a practical point of view, where would the obligation start and where would it end? It goes without saying that the current obligation would create enormous administ administrative burdens on providers as a countless amount of uh, content should be documented and disclosed. That's the first argument. The second argument is that copyright protection is also subjective. So in the EU, there's no copyright regi register and it's up to a judge to rule whether or not certain content meets the conditions of copyright protection or not. This makes the applicability of copyright protect protection uh, highly unpredictable, as one court can say that certain content is protected by copyright and another court can say that it's not. So we also raised several examples from case law to back this argument. Now, it is up to a judge to rule if certain content is protected by copyright or not, usually in the contents, context of litigation. So it is definitely not up to providers of foundation models to rule whether the criteria are met. However, under the current version of the AI Act, they would be required to make that assessment. So taking these two reasons into account, we argued that the current obligation is very, very hard to comply with. And we suggested to replace the current obligation or if it would be implemented to provide more guidance on how 
uh, yeah, providers can actually comply. Now, I'm not sure if our blog post had something to do with it, but we heard this week that there is now a proposal uh, on the table in the trial of discussions uh, where the obligation is under discussion, under review, and that there might that it might be uh, changed. We heard now that they are looking at a mechanism that focuses more on demonstrating that measures to respect law and ethics are in place and documenting all these steps. So now we would switch to a mechanism where the focus is not necessarily on identifying the content and identifying copyright protected works, but more on the manner in which copyright matters are just being handled. And we believe that such a system would make much more sense. Um, this way of working uh, at ML6 is also something that we are already thinking about and that we are implementing in our projects. For example, when we need in a certain project where we need to gather training data from external sources, which can sometimes be the case, uh, we always respect the current provisions of the copyright directive. So this means that in the first step, we check if we can acquire a license or not to use a certain work, uh, whether it's a Creative Commons license or not. And secondly, if the license does not seem available, uh, yeah, we always check whether we can rely upon the text and data mining exception or not. Then we check one, if we can have lawful access to the source, and two, if the rights are not reserved by the right holders. And if we can't acquire a, if we can't acquire a license, if we can't have lawful access, and if the rights are reserved, then we do not use the content concerned. So this is our policy. And for each project, we, we try to document this as well. So this is sort of mechanism that the uh, that we understand that the AI Act wants to implement or that is being discussed right now. Um, moreover, this way of working, where you think through processes and document the measures, is in our opinion also not only valuable for copyright, but also for other aspects of uh, implementing trustworthy AI. We believe that it's key to think through these risks, uh, such as not only copyright risks, but also bias, discrimination, data privacy, and so forth, and to put measures and processes in place, identifying these risks and potential actions to mitigate them. <clears throat> Moreover, we also do not have to wait for the AI Act to do this. Uh, yeah, I think we can already start doing that if you are an entity uh, yeah, making AI systems, for example. Uh, yeah, for instance, at ML6, we already have an ethics squad where we discuss these kind of issues and we where we make uh, such risk assessments. Now, anyway, to get back to this very specific copyright issue and to uh, summarize, yeah, we believe that the current obligation regarding copyright is almost impossible to comply with. But if we should believe the updates regarding the trilog discussions, uh, yeah, we should believe that it's going into the right direction, that the obligation is still under review and we hope that we uh, can evolve to a mechanism that makes uh, more sense. Thanks. Thank you, thank you very much, Michiel. That's that's very clear and has the merit of explaining how you guys do it in real life, <laughs> as opposed to policymakers trying to second guess it. So basically, the message is yes to general transparency. That is a good thing. Yes to documenting. Uh, how you handle data and as you said not only for copyright purposes but for a whole uh, series of reasons you know uh, assessing bias and, and things like that privacy um, but no to uh, an impossible to fulfill obligation of providing that detailed summary uh, or at least one that is very difficult to know what it exactly means in terms of scope and, and detail and granularity um, so Spanish presidency is moving in the right direction when they are um, making foundation models think about their procedures and think about copyright and, and how they handle data. Uh, but what, you know, um, the, the, the specific subset of copyright transparency might be more difficult and more tricky. So at the very least, it would need to be um, detailed further. Um, I'm not sure if I should say detailed about a detailed summary, but <laughs> the detailed summary should be detailed um, in terms of what it means and if it's possible to comply with. Um, well, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to see that ML6 is already moving forward and, and thinking about compliance with the AI Act while it's being discussed. 
And um, I'm pretty sure that your inputs will feed into the thinking of the AI Act trilogue negotiators. Thank you so much, Michiel. Thank you for having me.